You're a high school graduate working as a janitor. Huck suits you well, loser. Back in middle school, there was this classmate who seemed to have it out for me no matter what. She was a smart girl who even served as a class representative, but she always kept to herself. This girl really disliked me and would pick on me at every opportunity. I had no idea why, but after I pointed something out to her, she completely turned against me. We went our separate ways after high school and lost touch, but I never imagined we'd run into each other at the company. Her attitude towards me hadn't changed a bit since middle school. She still looked down on me. Crawling on the floor and cleaning is just right for you, she said with a mocking laugh. In response, my secretary tore up her resume right in front of her. Leave right now. Did you come to the interview here without knowing anything? My name is Alexander, pretty cool and old-fashioned, right? Even so, maybe it was hard for kids to call me that, so in kindergarten, everyone called me Alex. Now, I'm happily married to a woman I met during high school. We support each other and work together every day. It's busy and tough, but we're living fulfilling days. I wouldn't say I have a cleaning obsession, but I really like to clean. I need to keep not only myself, but also my surroundings clean to be satisfied. Each room has a lint roller ready, and there are two trash cans in each room. I can't stand things being left out, and I get restless if things aren't in their proper place. The same goes for my appearance. I hate it if my clothes aren't washed and ironed. Even if a bit of wrinkle is considered stylish for some clothes, I'd iron them. That's why I couldn't accept jeans with intentional damage that were popular for a while. But of course, coming home tired from work, it's better to be welcomed by a clean room than a dirty one. It's like a trait I was born with, so no matter how tired I am, I never skip cleaning. Cleaning also helps me relieve stress, so it's ultimately for my own good. People who don't know me well often think I have a cleaning obsession. And I not only like cleaning my room myself, but also enjoy watching others clean. Watching everyone cooperate in cleaning from a step back is something I like to observe. Many people struggle with cleaning and tidying up. That's why observing someone who can move efficiently feels like I can learn about their strengths in areas I wouldn't know from their regular work. I like discovering these unseen aspects for cleaning. And my wife, Charlotte, has a strict personality when it comes to manners and etiquette. As a matter of course, I've always said I'm off and I'm home, even when I was living alone. But the most stringent aspect was the attitude towards others. No matter the circumstances, I would never forgive someone who belittled others or hurled insults in front of a third party. If someone dared to do such a thing in front of Charlotte, they'd get a lecture. I've been present in such situations a few times, but it was in those moments that I found Charlotte quite intimidating and firmly told myself, ah, I must watch my behavior and choice of words around Charlotte. Speaking of grooming, it brings back a memory. This was back when I was in middle school. I believe everyone has their own values, but there was one classmate who was awkwardly trying to connect with me. This classmate was a girl named Sophia who served as the class representative. At the time, Sophia was one of the top students in our class. Apparently, both of her parents had attended and graduated from top universities, and it seemed like academic excellence ran in her family. Maybe that's why she was raised with the mindset that being the best was the norm. She always kept people at a distance, winning was expected, and she believed she always had to be on top, leading and giving orders. This belief was as natural to her as breathing. Even though I thought it was a twisted view, I didn't say anything since she seemed okay with it, especially since Sophia was solely focused on her studies. And I was the one who always competed with her for the top spot in our grade. Perhaps because my parents were also academically inclined. I had always had a good memory since I was young. I studied for tests, 
but if I paid attention during regular classes, I didn't need to cram to score well. I wouldn't say this out loud, though, to avoid sounding boastful. But for me, preparing for tests was just a review. For Sophia, it must have been frustrating not to be the clear number one. In her eyes, I was nothing but an obstacle. I had no intention of competing with Sophia, but by our third year in middle school, she started to make snide remarks every time she outperformed me. Oh, Alexander, did you have an off day this time? I was feeling a bit under the weather on the test day and thought I wouldn't make it to the top. Was it difficult for you? She implied that she was clearly at the top of the class and laughed, saying, Oh, you didn't understand such an easy question. Are you sure you are reviewing properly, Alexander? While Sophia's grades were indeed excellent, her social skills and grooming left much to be desired. The girls around us were starting to take an interest in fashion and made efforts to look cute within the school rules. But Sophia's interests were solely academic, with no concern for fashion. She had the classic nerdy look with braided pigtails and thick glasses. But nobody dared to point this out to her. Although Sophia was a top student, her condescending attitude meant she had no friends. She didn't seem to care, though, and spent her breaks reading alone at her desk. Among the girls starting to embrace fashion, she stood out for not fitting in. Among the boys, she was referred to behind her back as a nerdy girl. One day, thinking I was doing her a favor, I decided to give her some advice. Sophia, aren't you interested in fashion? Huh? You know, like trying contacts or changing your hairstyle. Just removing her glasses could change her impression, and if contacts were too scary, switching to more fashionable glasses could still transform her look. And her hairstyle could use a change too. Letting down her braids for a ponytail or even cutting it to a bob could make a big difference. I thought even trimming her bangs could make her face appear brighter. Maybe you'd make some friends then. Shut up. Sophia suddenly became furious at my suggestion. She stood up abruptly, throwing a book at me. I don't need to hear that from you. I was just trying to help. That's called meddling. None of your business. What's it to you anyway? Looks are subjective. I like my glasses and hairstyle as they are. Just leave me alone. Sophia's loud retort drew the attention of the entire class, and from that point on, she looked at me even more critically than before. Even though Sophia glared at me until graduation, I endured it, thinking that our association would end with middle school anyway. Naturally, Sophia's path was to attend a prestigious school. She might have been influenced by the expectations of those around her and her parents. On the other hand, I chose a regular public high school. When Sophia found out, she came up to my desk, puffing her chest out in triumph. Alexander, I hear you're going to a public high school. Yeah, so what? It's a shame. I thought I could compete with you here as well. I'm going to the top school in the county, so we might not see each other again. I truly hope so from the bottom of my heart. Continuing to face such an attitude in high school would probably drive me to the brink of stress. I've always been someone with little desire for competition. I don't cling to material things, and I can easily give up something if it means competing with someone else for it. Besides, attending a prestigious school would likely require a lot of money. My family is just an average middle-class household. Both my parents are intelligent, but they've never been interested in climbing the corporate ladder, believing that a balanced life without excess is best. So, we've always lived modestly. That's why I chose a school that was convenient and affordable. There's no shame in it since the school's academic level was average. It was also at this high school that I met Charlotte, who would become my wife. Therefore, I can confidently say that my choice was the right one. My meeting with Charlotte started with me falling for her at first sight. She was straightforward, 
disliked dishonesty, and had a no-nonsense personality, which seemed to put off some students. But more than that, she was surrounded by many female friends. Charlotte was serious but also knew how to blend in with those around her. Like a typical high school girl, she wore makeup within the school rules and matched accessories with her friends. I secretly admired Charlotte from afar. We were in different classes. Our electives and committees were also different, so I wanted to find a way to connect, but there were no opportunities for interaction. I was almost ready to give up, but it seems that fate was on my side. By chance, I ended up working at the same part-time job as Charlotte, which was introduced to me by a senior. The job was at a small bookstore. Charlotte worked the counter while I handled stocking new books, weekly magazines, and journals. The weight of the magazines could be quite heavy in large numbers. I was prepared for the physical demand, but by the time I finished, my back and arms ached terribly. During a break, I found myself massaging my back in the storeroom. Embarrassingly, this turned out to be the first chance for Charlotte and me to converse. Ha, huh, you look beat. Good job, Alexander. Ah, uh, thanks. We're from the same high school, right? Uh, you know about me. I was thrilled and my heart raced at the thought that she knew me. I wasn't a standout like Charlotte, so I assumed I was unnoticed. I was even prepared to graduate without ever being recognized by her. Because it's a cool name, Alexander has an old-fashioned ring to it. Uh, yeah, I like it too. Charlotte started to close the distance between us, and I was secretly celebrating inside. After that, we began talking about high school at our part-time job, and even started chatting at school. We would greet each other in the hallways, and even started lending and borrowing textbooks. When we ended up in the same class as we moved up the grades, we would often engage in lively conversations in the classroom. Charlotte was always popular, and she was constantly surrounded by people. Feeling anxious about this situation, I decided to confess my feelings to her on the way home from our part-time job. I like you. Will you go out with me? It wasn't a cool way to confess, but I just expressed my feelings directly, in a straightforward manner. That was all I, a clumsy person, could do. In the dimly lit street after our part-time job, Without any romantic atmosphere or mood, Charlotte accepted me. We smoothly started dating from there and graduated from high school. We didn't go on to university together, but instead decided to work at the headquarters, introduced by our part-time job manager. Furthermore, the manager acted as a matchmaker and they were able to get married. Everything seemed to fall into place smoothly since meeting Charlotte and I cherished my happiness. One day, as I was diligently cleaning at the company as usual, a shadow fell in front of me. Because I was mopping the floor, I could tell from the feet that the shadow belonged to a woman wearing a recruit suit and high heels. And when I looked up to see the face, I was startled. Sophia. It was Sophia, my classmate from middle school with whom I had lost touch since graduation. It seemed Sophia had started to care a bit more about her appearance compared to back then. Her glasses were now half-rimmed, and she had a fashionable hairstyle, held up with a black scrunchie. However, her makeup didn't seem quite right, as if she wasn't used to it or it didn't suit her. Ha ha! Sophia looked down at me and chuckled. She puffed up her cheeks, crossed her arms, and lifted the corners of her mouth, Ah, are you the one crawling around here, Alexander? Hey, Sophia, long time no see. Are you seriously doing this as a job, a janitor? Ha oh, ha, oh dear, have you fully embraced being a loser? As Sophia said all this in one breath, I secretly thought to myself, ah, same as ever. She didn't raise her voice, but her condescending attitude hadn't changed. No. It might have even powered up. Alexander, you didn't pursue further studies, 
even though there are jobs out there even for high school graduates. Choosing to be a cleaner isn't that too much to think you were my rival during middle school. That's enough. As Sophia continued to look down on me and spew sarcasm, Charlotte's voice sharply cut through. Charlotte's gaze was stern. Even as her husband, I felt a chill run through me at her expression. What now? Charlotte, in front of a flistered Sophia, pulled out a document and showed it to us. It was Sophia's resume, with Sophia written in the name section. Seeing that we had recognized it, Charlotte quickly tore it down the middle. The sound of the paper tearing was followed by more tearing, until it was shredded beyond repair. What? What are you doing? Do you even realize whom you were talking to? Huh? The person cleaning over there, that's our president, Mr. Johnson. President. Seriously, coming here without even researching the president of the company you're applying to, we don't need to interview someone like you. Please leave. Charlotte pointed sharply towards the exit and inside, I fought, scary. While Sophia was busy studying at university, I had been working hard at the headquarters, learning the ropes from seniors and superiors. Through hard work and gradually improving performance, the president advised me that I was better suited to starting my own business rather than working under someone else. He was truly kind to me until the end, passing on books that inspired him during his own entrepreneurial journey and even taking me to networking parties with other business owners, introducing me to many valuable contact. With such support from those around me, Charlotte and I discussed it and decided to start our own company. I was actually aware that Sophia had applied to our company. When her application came through, I wondered if it was some mistake, but enough time had passed since middle school, and Charlotte thought it was okay. So I let her application proceed to the interview stage. Charlotte was in charge of everything that followed. I trusted Charlotte's judgment and strictness and manners. She has a keen eye for people. That's why I entrusted her with the roles of my secretary and HR director. Our company, though small, has successfully attracted talented individuals and expanded its business. I believe this success is solely due to Charlotte's exceptional ability to evaluate people. As the HR director, Charlotte took action against Sophia. Even if you were a classmate of President Johnson, it doesn't matter. We don't hire people who lack the basic etiquette expected of a working professional. What do you mean? I graduated from a top university in active service. So what? Weren't you the one who always had it in for him during middle school, always acting snide towards him? In the professional world, your academic background isn't as important as having common sense and basic decency. Sophia fell silent under Charlotte's relentless words. Essentially, Charlotte was saying Sophia lacked common sense. If you still want to join our company, carefully consider what I've said and start over from square one. That day, Sophia was sent home without even being allowed to interview. Later, I heard from a middle school friend about some rumors circulating in our hometown regarding this incident. Despite attending a prestigious school, Sophia wasn't as exceptional as she or others thought. She wasn't the top student, and she didn't get into top tier universities like Harvard. To make matters worse, her younger sister was highly talented and got into one of the nation's top universities straight out of high school. The difference between them had been evident since childhood, and Sophia was constantly compared to her sister by relatives and her parents. Why can't she be more like her sister? Really, who does she take after? It seemed she was treated harshly by her own parents, likely feeling quite out of place at home. Desperate for their recognition, she neglected fashion and socializing with classmates, focusing solely on her studies. To her, someone like me, who often ranked first in our grade, was nothing but an obstacle. Understanding the background made her intense rivalry more comprehensible. Then, my friend started saying something strange. Weren't you the only one who paid attention to Sophia? 
Maybe she had a crush on you. What? She treated me like trash. You know, like how kids are mean to those they actually like. That's what was suggested, but the only time I initiated contact with Sophia was when I commented on her grooming. Other than that, it was always Sophia who picked fights with me, and she seemed to have regarded me as an enemy ever since the grooming comment. If what my friend said was true, then Sophia might be even more awkward than I am. Perhaps she had her own way of reaching out, but at the time, I was not comfortable around Sophia and had no interest in romance, so I wouldn't have noticed anyway. Sophia's awkwardness hasn't changed, has it? But I did leave her many hints. Eh. When I said, come back after you've thought it over, I didn't say, don't ever come back. She can figure it out if she thinks about it, right? Aha. Uh -huh. If she was listening properly in that state, that is. Even though I heard about it from you, I didn't expect it to be that bad. She seemed like someone not used to dealing with people. Faced with Charlotte's sharp assessment, I could only offer a wry smile without a response. Sophia might have been harshly judged by her family, but she was undoubtedly intelligent. With her intellect and capabilities, I hope this experience frees her from her past constraints and helps her rediscover her true potential. Once she calms down, she'll notice the hints Charlotte gave her, and I hope she'll come back for another interview. I sincerely hope that everything moves in a positive direction.